hear a lot about owned media, earned media, and paid media, and sometimes you may even hear shared media. These terms get thrown around a lot. We're going to talk about which you must have, which gets the best results, which gets you the quickest results, which one keeps on giving, which ones do you need, plus a fifth one that you should never overlook. One of the services we provide is helping entrepreneurs start pulling together these and other marketing strategies. That's the type of focus that you have to have when you're looking at building your business to a million dollars plus. And I know this because I've helped several companies build to multi-million and multi-billion dollar businesses. Let's talk about these standard four that you hear of. Owned media is when you are leveraging your own platform that you own and create and control. This could be things like your website, your email list, even direct mail. Some people put social media under this as well, but we put it in its own group of shared media. That's things that your brand creates to share on third-party platforms like your social media, Facebook, YouTube. Think of it kind of like rented space. You don't own the platform, but you do own the message. So it's kind of a hybrid of owned media, but yet it's not because as we've talked about before, things on third-party platforms can get removed. Your account can get shut down. You don't own that space. You can only own the message that you're putting on it. This also can encompass collaborative content, such as when we have a podcast guest come on our show, we are posting information about their business. So for them, it's kind of a hybrid of owned and earned media, but it's shared media. It can also include some types of user-generated content, although a lot of those will fall under one of the other ones. Always keep in mind, third-party platforms, you don't own those, and so you need to make sure that you have a platform that you do own. Earned media, the third type, is when other people talk about or share about your business or your product or even share your content. This is most forms of user-generated content. It could be word of mouth, which is still the best form of marketing and advertising you can have and do. It can also include press, getting interviewed on local, national press of some type, reviews, and testimonials. These are things given voluntarily by other people. You're not forcing them to do it. You're not paying them to do it. They're talking about you mostly of their own volition. So that's how where you can see some user-generated content would fall into that, but some of it would be maybe you're encouraging them through a drawing or sales or whatever it may be to share your content. Paid media, which you probably know, is when you're paying to leverage a third party, such as pay-per-click advertising on your social media platform, paid influencers or micro-influencers, which we've talked about in the past, sponsorships, that could be an official sponsorship like we had done when I worked at Century 21. We became the official real estate company of the Dallas Cowboys. It can also include sponsoring someone else's post. You'll see that in Instagram a lot where it's a paid influencer and they're putting the, the post is sponsored by another company. And it can also include some of the traditional advertising venues such as radio, television, magazines, and newspapers. Anytime you are paying to have your message put somewhere, that is paid media. As I've mentioned, social media kind of can fall into multiples of these categories, which is why we're putting it in its own shared media. You own the posts that you're distributing. You earn media when a customer or someone else talks about your business on social media, and you can use pay-per-click advertising for paid media. Now, out of these four, which one do you need? And the answer is all of them, but it's the when that depends. We understand that a brand new entrepreneur starting out maybe isn't going to be able to get press coverage and earned media. Maybe you don't have a big budget to do any paid advertising. But think of it like a stool. We all know if a stool only has one leg, it falls over. And if it only has two, it still falls over. But once you get three or four, you have a stable base and you can put all kinds of things on top of it. These 
four media strategies are part of a holistic marketing strategy. Marketing isn't anywhere near as effective when you're doing it in silos, which is why you want to always integrate and think of your marketing pieces as part of a whole. Although, if you're just starting out or you don't know what to do, you may be a couple years down the road and you don't know what to do at this point, do anything, it's still better than doing nothing. All of this also encompasses your ability to tell a compelling story about your business, which is an important part of branding. You have to think beyond just the visual component of your branding. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of each of these different types of media. Owned and some of shared media. Some of the cons are there's no guarantees. There's no guarantee that when you put a message out, anyone's going to respond. Also, company-owned communication isn't as trusted as some of the other ones. No surprise there. Also, it takes time to scale. You can't put a message out and then expect in a week to have a bunch of sales because of it. I see new entrepreneurs all the time going, I don't understand. I started my website two weeks ago and I don't have any sales. <laughs> Welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. It does have some great pros though. The first one is that it's the only place where you control the message being put out. Also, it's usually highly cost efficient. Even if your website, if you've paid someone and you've spent several thousand dollars on it, if you've done that, it should have a lot of functionality that's actually designed to help get you clients. So it can be cost efficient in the long term. It's not costing you to post each time you post a blog article on your website. It's not costing you to post when you put something on Facebook, the shared media. So from that standpoint, very cost effective strategy. Also, it has versatility. You can kind of do what you want because you own the platforms and you're talking to a niche audience, which is a big thing that's thrown around and I pe think people confuse it and we'll talk about that specifically some point later. But the best thing is that it has longevity. It is there for a while. Over time, that starts to snowball. If that's the only piece you're doing, you can still get there. It's going to take you a lot longer. But the good thing is if you have that piece with a couple of the other ones, over time you'll see it start snowballing. Your website will start getting more and more traffic. You'll start getting more and more fans on social media and it lasts a long time. So you need it in place because you need that longevity in your business, communications, and your marketing. Paid media, the cons of it are that it is, it's cluttery. Think about all the ads you see when you just scroll through Facebook. It's almost spammy. It can be annoying. There are declining response rates on a lot of the platforms just because of the overwhelming amount of ads available. If you think about it, Facebook has millions of advertisers messages to choose from to show on your feed. And so there's going to be people who don't get shown on your feed that are paying for their ad. It can be really hard to get a good response rate. They're still one of the least expensive forms of paid media, but they are getting a little more expensive if you want to get that level of response. Also, again, poor credibility because the message is coming from you, the company, it's never trusted as much as third party saying it. Now the pros, it can make you generate more demand and immediately generate that demand. So while owned media or shared media is a longer term strategy and you need that long term strategy, adding paid media on top of it can give you some of that immediacy. Your message will get out to more people quicker. It's easier to scale and you still control it because you're still the one designing the ad. So there's still that level of control. Paid media can act as a catalyst that feeds your owned platform. So it's sending people to your website. It's sending people to sign up for your email list. And it can help create opportunities for earned media because you're being seen more visibly and that kind of exposure can result in some earned media. Now, talking about earned media, the cons of it is that Oftentimes you have no control over it. I remember all the times, I swear, every time I've been interviewed on television, especially if it's a short clip for an evening news program, I swear that we have this great, you know, two or three minute conversation where I say some really insightful and intelligent response to their question. And they take the stupidest 15 seconds of what I said, and that's what gets aired. And I'm just like, 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe that everyone <laughs> watching the news now saw the worst 15 seconds of the interview. That's how it happens. They found something in that 15 seconds that they thought was most important. And there you go. That's how it works. Sometimes earned media can be negative. If there's a story going on and your business is part of that story, it may come out negative. It can also be hard to scale because not everybody is beating down your door wanting to get an interview with you. And it can also be really hard to measure. But there are some pros with it. It is the most credible source of media that there is. Now, remember, earned media, we also talked that sometimes social media can be earned media, like when a customer leaves you a review or testimonial, but that can still be hard to get. Nielsen's study shows 83% of consumers trust recommendations from people we know. That shouldn't be surprising. You're going to trust the recommendation from the person sitting right next to you more than you are from me if you don't really know me that well. That's just how it is. Two-thirds of people trust reviews and opinions posted online and editorial content from newspapers and magazines, although some of the review things that have happened in the past couple years, it's kind of taken a ding on that, but still the editorial content, newspapers and magazines, actually some of that's taken a ding too, but it's still trusted more than any communication you personally put out. And a pro is that it's transparent and it lives on. It has longevity like some of your own media because it's out there. Once it's out there, it's kind of forever. Getting earned media is the result of a well-coordinated and executed strategy. So that can be a con. It can take longer to do. I actually have some tips that I'll talk about how you can access those in a minute. Now, a fifth one that people don't talk about a lot, but I think it's just as important, is internal media. Things that you are sharing with your own team. And if your business has more than one person, if it is more than just you as a solo entrepreneur, you need to begin considering that internal communication strategy. You need to think about what you're sharing with your team and when and why. Have it strategic. The frequency with which you share it, the cadence, how they can access it. Plus, ways that your own team can share your external communications, such as having a repository where they can go grab something that they can share on social media if they want to. If you have a team, that strategy can be just as important as the other four that you hear about most often. So let's talk about how you can get in my brain and kind of find out how we coordinate all these things together for us, for clients, for anyone that needs it. We have a mini training. It's going to last about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions we get. We're going to go over examples of scenarios, how you can combine these different five types of media. Now, you don't have to have all five at the same time, but remember we said you probably need at least three. So how you can combine them, when you can combine them. We're going to talk through one of the hardest places to reach, the press, getting some of that earned media and some of the strategies that I use for us and for our clients help you think through some new creative content formats that maybe you haven't tried and could help you leverage one of the other pillars of media. And plus, most importantly, how to measure each of the different types of media so that you can gauge if you're getting results, if they're the results you wanted and expected, if you need to change your strategy, or maybe you know you need to kind of stop one for a bit and revisit it and refocus it before you start it up again. So the link to that free mini class is in the description, and we're going to go over all of those things and help you gather and really focus on a strategy, incorporating all five of those different types of media when and where and how they are most effective. If you have questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And as always, you can visit our website, vickywoo.marketing. We have a chat bubble icon in the bottom right corner, and you can click on that and ask your question there as well. See you next time. While you're here, check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss the latest marketing tips. 